Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 12th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Well, with a patch Tuesday, let's uh, first uh, cover uh, that uh, part uh, quickly. Microsoft released fixes for a total of 57 vulnerabilities, 19 of which Microsoft rated as critical and 24 allowed for remote code execution. Now, out of these 57 vulnerabilities, four are actually already publicly known. The publicly known ones are actually not the ones that I would consider the most critical in this release. The first one and the only publicly known vulnerability that Microsoft considers critical is a remote code execution vulnerability in HoloLens. That's Microsoft's VR gear, not very commonly used, so I don't really see it as that super important. The next two public known vulnerabilities are spoofing vulnerabilities vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge. Now, uh, these vulnerabilities can be used to impersonate another website. So again, nothing that super critical. Microsoft only rates them as important and moderate. The fourth one is a denial of service vulnerability in Windows Explorer. While annoying, I don't think it takes much of an exploit to crash any modern browser. Now, the one that really confused me the most uh, was CV 2017-85-89. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in Windows Search. Now, we had a patch for Windows Search last month, and that was a vulnerability that was actually being already exploited. So, was a little bit confused to see this again here. Looks, according to the CVE, like a different vulnerability and Microsoft states that this vulnerability has not yet been exploited, but this would probably be the one that I would fix first because it is somewhat remote exploitable if you do allow outbound SMB connections. Interesting also is CVE 2017-85-88. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in WordPad. Yes, WordPad, not Microsoft Word. And it can be exploited like many of these vulnerabilities by opening a malicious document in WordPad. Of course, sometimes users do open suspicious documents in tools like WordPad because they feel it's safer than Word, probably true to some extent. But in this particular case, actually, WordPad would be the wrong choice. And then, of course, we got a Flash update. It fixes only four CVEs, only four vulnerabilities here fixed uh, with this particular Flash bulletin. And as usual, modern Microsoft browsers, of course, include Flash. So you will get the update for these browsers from Microsoft directly. And we got an interesting story by Justin Williams, uh, who was the victim of a phone hijacking attack. Now, you've probably heard about this, that SMS messages aren't supposed to be secure for two-factor authentication. And the reason is exactly the attack that Justin experienced here. The problem isn't technical in the sense that it doesn't affect any networking protocols. It's social engineering. In his case, he noticed that all of a sudden his phone stopped working and when he called the phone company what he found out was that some individual was calling them all day until they found a representative who was willing to switch the phone number over to a new phone without asking for a security code that was set up for this account. Now, the end effect was that Justin actually lost some money from his bank account and his PayPal account. The attacker did take advantage of owning the phone number in order to receive two-factor authentication tokens. So lesson learned, if you really care about an account, SMS isn't strong enough, in particular online banking and the like. You probably want to use at least a soft token, maybe even a hard token. Also, if your phone all of a sudden stops working, get in contact with the phone company as soon as possible. 
And a few days ago, I talked about a system D vulnerability. The problem here was that if you try to run a service using system D under a user that's actually invalid, typically starting with a number, that the service would in the, instead start as root. Now, system D initially disputed whether that's actually a vulnerability. They were somewhat right about it because you already have to be root in order to change these configuration files, but apparently they changed their mind and are going to fix this problem now. This issue will be treated as an invalid configuration and the affected service will just refuse to start probably a sensible solution in this case. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.